What's going on everybody, you got Tone here, the coach of your Miami Mala Marlins, and we are here bringing you guys PPL Division 1 Season 6 Week Number 7. This week your Miami Mala Marlins are taking on the commissioner of the PPL itself in Jack, aka the Don Fanatic coach of the Norwich City. Now I do apologize that this video is going to be up so late, I uh, just, we had... I had no time to record after we had the battle and everything and for the most part it was just like some issues on my end so I again I do apologize for how late this is going up but um, hopefully that will be um, that won't be the case in future weeks so um, so here's a matchup uh, you see the team matchup in the top right corner with um, our team of nine and my opponent, uh, Jack the Don Fanatic, has access to Jirachi, Clefable, Salamence, Arcanine, Delmise, Gastrodon, Mega Aerodactyl, Lucario, and Raichu, with the Zemons being the Jirachi and, not the Jirachi, the Salamence and the Raichu, excuse me. So overall, his team is very, very solid. He has one of the best Dragon Various Leo cores in the entire league. Um, so prepping for this, his team as a whole was definitely not easy. Um, especially considering watching Jack as a battler at, in his own right and hearing it from Jolt's um, own mouth is Jack's the type of person that has that wants to have responses for everything when it comes to your uh, an opponent's team and I'm, I was no exception to the rule in this particular case so the one thing I wanted to try to take advantage of with his team was his lack of a dark type on his draft um, and the fact that I have a Necrozma I figured I'd try to make this particular set that you see here the win con so this is what the team was built was started with with this Necrozma set with the wiki berries calm mind iron defense substitute stored power now I contemplated between stored power and photon geyser but I figured I'd go stored power because I um I wanted to be in a situation where if I had something spammable, I would click stored power with enough boost, I could plow through his entire team. Of course, he does have the Jirachi, which double resists Psychic, and there are some other things he can bring against my team. I, I was contemplating his entire way of shutting down my Necrozma between Underwear Clef, which pretty much has to come against me, um, like a Spadef Toxic uh, Jirachi, but if he was Spadef, then he wouldn't be able to break my subs with Iron Head. I consider running Speed on my Necrozma for Jirachi, but I figured I'd go with Bulk. I consider like a bunch of stuff just went off in my head. Roar Arcanine, Toxic Gastrodon, which is why I have Substitute on this set. Clear Smog Gastrodon, another reason why I had Substitute on this set, because Clear Smog does not, the effects of Clear Smog does not bypass Substitutes. So there was that. I was considering, and I was also contemplating facing like a taunt uh, Mega Aerodactyl as well. So I had a lot of stuff going on in my head when I was building this set. But nonetheless, this is the um, this is what I settled on. The the EVs are in a way so that with an, with my HP and my special defense investment, a scald from a uninvested Gastron will never break the sub of my Necrozma in one hit, and that I can just go for Calm Mind's Iron Defenses as to ensure that at plus two defense with my investment, a Jirachi's Iron Head will not break my sub either, so it does have to come down to flinch shenanigans or so I hope that's not the case. So... Yeah, that's more or less the um, primary win con for this um, particular game. So that's Necrozma. Next up is the Tapu Koko with the Electrium Z, Thunderbolt, Dazzling Gleam, U-Turn, Nature's Madness. Nature's Madness is just there for that Gastronon as it is, can switch in every time to my Tapu Koko for free. Same thing goes to like a Assault Vest Delmice. Um, and then I can just U-Turn uh, out if the situation calls for it. So running modest because I'm only running enough speed for Raichu. Mega Aerodactyl already outspeeds me anyway, so there's no point trying to like um, creep Aerodactyl and all that stuff. That that just wasn't working out for me in terms of my build. So try to keep it simple. Thunderbolt, Z Thunderbolt and Electric Terrain just nukes a good portion of the team, if not almost everything. Um, the exception being the Delmise and the Gastron, of course. 
but that is my Tapu Koko. Next up is the Gligar making its debut for the team. Stealth Rock, Roost, Earthquake, and Stone Edge. This is just literally here to get up as my Stealth Rocker because um, I don't have rocks on my Ferrothorn. And this is just my check. I use the word check very loosely because of the fact that he has a Mech Aerodactyl that gets Ice Fang. There's a Lucario, it gets Ice Punch. So, <laughs> it doesn't die in one hit. That's At least that's the case. If I get up rocks, I get pressure, stuff like Arcanine and all that stuff. I'm ranking up speed on my Gligar to outspeed uh, Uninvested Arcanine. The rest is put into defense. Uh, nothing much else to say about my Gligar set. Then next up we have Shadowman, the Choice Specs Greninja with Surf, Dark Pulse, Ice Beam, and U-Turn with enough speed again for the, for the, um, for the Raichu. But more or less, this is also just a good nuke in general just because his water resist is the Gastrodon, which could also take a spec star pulse, but at the same time, he does have to pick and choose between um, keeping Clef healthy for my um, Necrozma and whatnot, and also making sure that Gastron is getting whittled down to prevent my Tabu Coco from spamming ele electric stats all over the place. So, this is a pretty nice um, uh, set nonetheless, uh, just Spectre Ninja just trying to come in and just nuke stuff as best as it possibly could. Uh, next up is the Halucha. I'm finally bringing Halucha for the first time since I took over this team. High Jump Kick, Swords Dance, Acrobatics, and Drain Punch. Max HP, Max Attack. Don't need Speed Investment because after my Electric Seed, um, after I activate the Electric Seed and my Unburden Boost, I am... I'm faster than everything on his team, including stuff like a Choice Scarf Jirachi, um, plus one Vents, all that stuff. I think his fastest, even Scarf Raichu, I outspeed with my Halucha. There's really nothing you can do about that. Um, but other than that, this is just a nice um, late game win con. This is my backup win con if um, the Krasma doesn't um, do the deed in the beginning. So. That's nothing much else to say about Halucha. Just try to come in after the Electro C activates, get up an SD, and try to nuke stuff. That's pretty much going to be the um, long and short of it. And then lastly is the Ferrothorn with the Akaberry, Spikes, Toxic, Power Whip, and Gyro Ball with a uh, special defense investment with max HP. It's more or less to ensure that my Ferrothorn can take a Flamethrower with Akaberry. Plus another flamethrower from an uninvested Clefable. So then I can essentially try to get up two gyro balls with Clefable if he's not running like the jolt strategy and running zero IVs and on his Clef <laughs> to minimize the damage from gyro ball. But anyway, um, Spikes just to have to sack his team because his removal is pretty much limited to just um, Salamence. It forces the Delmise to rapid spin, take iron barbs damage. Um, and the only other option is Defog Mega Aerodactyl, which I doubt he would try to bring in this matchup. So, that is going to be the team builder. I'm sorry it's a little bit rushed, um, considering that it's already, this video is going up so late as it is. So, um, that's going to be it. I'm going to just, uh, switch right on over to the battle itself. And you're going to see that my opponent has decided to bring the Jirachi, the Clefable, the Raichu, the Lucario, the Gashadon, and the Delmai. So, first and foremost, I am very happy to see no Salamence. Um, I'm not going to lie, like, Dragon and Salamence was actually kind of a big pain in the butt to deal with. Um, but I can, I figured he wouldn't bring, try to bring Ment because, uh, Coco can offensively check it, he can't try to bring Scarf against me because I do have some ways of checking it between Gligar, uh, I could have brought like a bulky, I have a bulky Necrozma, Ferrothorn, and all that stuff. So, pretty understandable why he brought what he did. So, the fact that he didn't bring like, alright, it's not really the fact, it's more the fact, um, the, the sense that uh, the strategy was no different, The I was going to try to Win in the early game with my Necrozma, and then try to save Halucha for the late game as per the um as per my strategy. So in terms of a lead, I decided to leave with my Greninja for two reasons. One, um, he doesn't really have much that can switch into uh, Spec Surf aside from Gastrodon, and if he leads off with Jirachi, I could just scout and see if his if he is indeed. 
um, Scarf Rachi, or if this is a Stealth Rocker and his Clefable is more of a setup sweeper, so to speak. So, uh, with that being said, I am just going to start the battle here and see how we do. So, uh, regardless, like I said, I'm going to leave with my Greninja for two reasons. The main reason is to um, see if his Jirachi is indeed Scarf. So I'm going to lead off with Greninja as he does, in fact, lead off with Starboy, his Jirachi. So I want to click U-Turn here. Um, cause if he is Scarf, he is going to U-turn right out into his Gastron, which is exactly what's going to happen here. I know I want to take a good chunk of damage from this U-turn, but I know I could live the hit. So, he's going to go out into Fidel Gastro, his Gastron, as I expected. So, I'm going to U-turn myself, and I'm going to go right into my Brachma, because I figured... You know what? Let's try and let's try to force him. Let's try to put him in a very bad spot here. So I'm gonna click substitute here just to see if this Gashon does indeed have the toxic that I expected, and it does show to toxic. So what this allows me to do now is get up a calm mind in the face of this Gashon. So now that I am at plus one in special attack and plus one special defense, it means that this um, my substitute will 100% be not broken by this uh, Gashon here. So he's gonna fire off a Scald. And that is going to do absolutely nothing. It's not going to pop my sub as I expected. He's now going to switch out his Gastron. He's going to go out into his Clefable here. As I'm going to go for another Calm Mind. So now I am getting up at plus 2. Um, plus 2, plus 2. Which is a good um, situation for me. Because it's boosting the power of stored power. Um, so now I believe I went for... Yeah, I went for stored power here. Mainly because of the fact that if he had Encore, he would click it here. As you see, he has, does roughly half, and he's going to go fire off a Moon Blast instead, which is um, going to break my mom substitute because of damage from the from Gashin on Skull. He chose to be leftovers, which I expected. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go for a substitute here, and hopefully he is not Encore here. But he's just going to keep firing off Moon Blast here, and I pretty much derped at this point because I um, at this point I believe I forgot that um, unaware. Ne um, ne it ignores my special defense boost, so no matter how many times I play substitute here, I am just going to, um, it's a losing battle because this moon boss is going to be fired off with, um, um, with max, it's going to be like, it's like my Necrozma had no boost whatsoever, so moon blast will always break my sub. I go for another call mine here because I knew that Clefable would attack me this turn, so he's going to activate my wiki berry, get me in a good spot, I'm at plus... Uh, three plus three, and I believe I went for an Iron Defense this turn. Yeah, I go for an Iron Defense here because I knew I'm gonna take one more Moon Blast from this Clefable, barring a crit. And this also ensures that with my next stored power will, in fact, break, um, will take out this Clefable because it's it's becoming a big nuisance. And with Clefable out of the way, it makes things a little bit easier for my Halucha to win in the late game. So we're going to take out the Clefable here with the stored power. So one threat is down. But in comes the Jirachi here, and I believe I am going to switch, if I recall correctly. No, I okay. So I stayed in. I stayed and tried to go for stored power to get some damage off on the Jirachi, but I get Iron Head flinch, and I, now I switch out, which was pretty much my mistake. Because since I already committed to boosting so much with my Ferrothorn, I mean, I'm a Ferrothorn, as I go out with the Ferrothorn, um, the fact that I, I should have stayed committed to staying in with Necrozma, but I didn't want to get nothing out of the turn and essentially just, like, um, get my Necrozma Iron Head flinched down um, to the point where I can't do anything else. So I'm going to switch out, go with my Ferrothorn here. He's going to... Um, go out into his Delmise, and I am going to go for Spikes, as he reveals Hidden Power of Fire on the Delmise. So, solid prep on Jack's part here, bringing the um, Hidden Power of Fire Delmise. I do get off a of Toxic on this Delmise, so um, another thing for my Halucha to take advantage of as it's um, whittling it down. So, now he's going to go for Gyro Ball here. I think he expects me to switch out into my Coco or something like that. So, I'm going to keep getting up Spikes this turn, um, because of the fact that Spikes help out my team tremendously as the rest, as his entire team is grounded. Um, the chip damage will help me out very, very well. So, you go for another Hidden Power of Fire here. I knew I could take one 
and I believe I just keep going for spikes here because like I didn't need my fer I didn't feel like I needed my ferrothorn. It was mainly just here to try to get up spikes. So as I'm just he's just taking the toxic damage, taking more toxic damage. Um, I'm gonna switch out here and I'm gonna go out into my uh, Greninja here. He's gonna make another solid play. He's gonna go for the rapid spin. Um, cause he expected me to preserve my Ferrothorn for the Gastrodon. Cause I really had nothing else at this point. And so what I'm going to do now, he's just going to stack off his Delmice here to the Dark Pulse because since he knew that the spikes were gone, he didn't need, uh, Delmice again. So Greninja picking up a kill. I'm going to go, he's going to go out into his Raichu here. I'm going to click, uh, Specs Dark Pulse here and I'm going to get a crit. Which ends up mattering because he told me afterwards he was Assault Vest Raichu. Um, so he definitely would have taken um, a Specs Dark Pulse plus another Dark Pulse um, had that crit not happened. So he's going to go for a knockoff here, remove my Choice Specs. And it comes to Gastronon again. I'm going to go fire up an Ice Beam because um, if it, I went for Ice Beam in case he decided to go into Clef. So now I'm just going to keep going for Dark Pulse here. He's going to fire off a Skull and kill off my Greninja. So. Not a really good exchange on my part, but at the very least, I can go out into my Ferrothorn here and try to bring some momentum back here as he's going to redraw his Gastrodon. He's going to go out into his Raichu and he's going to go for the Power Whip, but I unfortunately miss. Um, he's going to go and knock, he's going to click knock off here again, expecting me to switch out into my Gligar, I think he said. Um, but I'm not going to go hard Gligar on a Pokemon that could have hidden Power Ice, you know. So, we're going to take out the Raichu here with the um, Gyro Ball here. Don't want to risk Power Whip missing again. In comes Tyson Furry, his Lucario. I'm going to go hard into my, um, my Gligar here as he is just going to go for the Swords Dance here. Getting at the plus two. So now I'm like, yeah, if he has Ice Punch, I don't live. Um, even if I was max defense, I wouldn't have lived anyway. So in comes the Ice Punch, that's going to kill my Gligar. So unfortunately, Gligar <laughs> wasn't able to do anything in this battle. He's revealed to be Life Orb. So now I'm going to go out into my Tapu Koko here, because even though he's at plus two, I know my Koko can take a extreme speed from full HP. He is going to withdraw and go out into his Gastrodon here. I believe I just went straight for the T-Bolt. Yeah, I went straight for T-Bolt. I wanted to force it out. So now I'm going to go for the U-turn, and I'm going to U-turn out into my Necrozma, if I recall correctly. Um, this battle took place like a while ago, so uh, I do apologize if I don't remember everything off the top of my head so quickly. So he's going to go for the recover here, get some health back, and I'm going to go for the Calm Mind, I think. Oh yeah, I went for Iron Defense first. <laughs> Now, I went for Iron Defense because I wanted to ensure that at least um, if the Jirachi or the Lucario comes back in, I at least can um, take a hit. But I get Scald Burn, unfortunately, so the burn is going to end up killing my Necrozma here, so that's going to suck. <laughs> but nonetheless, I get to go back out into my Ferrothorn here and just click Power Whip for free. As I believe he does go for the Scald here, trying to pick up the kill or burn me. Um, he doesn't get either. And I'm going to get the power whip off. He does reveal to be the Rindo Berry. And he is going to still drop to this um, to power whip. So Ferrothorn picking up its second kill of the game. Taking out this Gastrodon. So things are a little bit easier now for my top of Coco. In comes the Lucario here. As he is going to go for the Sword Stance again. I am have no reason to switch out at this point. Because I just need to keep pressure on this Lucario. So I'm going to keep clicking Gyro Ball. Because he needs to be at least plus four to take out my Halucha after the electric, um, with my electric seed boost. So he's going to go for Swords Ant again. Like I said, he has to be plus four. Because plus two ESP doesn't take out Coco. And he needs to be plus four to take out my Halucha with a, um, with a, with a extreme speed. So he goes for the Drain Punch here. He's going to kill my Ferrothorn. But unfortunately for him... The Iron Barb's damage plus Life Orb Recoil will kill the um, will kill the Lucario. So this is a great trade off for me, um, Ferrothorn for Lucario, and that's I have no problem with that. So his last Pokemon is the Jirachi. I'm gonna sound my Tapu Koko here. I have no reason not to, and it's basically just gonna come down to Iron Head flinches with my Coco or my Halucha 
and winning in the late game. So I'm going to fire off the um, Z Thunderbolt here. He goes for the Iron Head, and he is not going to get the flinch. I'm going to get the fire off the Z Thunderbolt in Electric Terrain, and this Jirachi is going to drop to the Gigavolt Havoc. And we, the Miami Marlins, are going to pick up a 2-0 win over the Norwich Skitty. So first and foremost, GG to Jack, aka the Don Fanatic. This was a great, great game nonetheless. Um, uh, I think there was like a couple of plays that I could did a little bit better was on my part was, like I said, when I tried to set up with the, when I set up with my Necrozma, I shouldn't have stayed more committed to um, staying in. Instead of trying to switch out with my Jirachi, but um, out of the Jirachi because I was already at plus two defense, and even if I got Iron Head flinched down, it would have gave me a free switch into Coco or Gligar, and I could have gotten on my Rock and all that stuff. So a lot of different um, scenarios I could have played out differently in this battle, but nonetheless, we finally pick up our first win in the PPL. We are now three and four. Uh, with like a negative seven or negative five differential, it's it's, in, it's negative something. That's all I remember. Um, but most more importantly, like MVP of this game, definitely have to go to Ferrothorn here. Picking up uh, two kills, essentially picking up three with the Lucario dropping. That was like the biggest threat remaining on his team. Once um, um, for the most part, kind of wish I had kept the hazards up, but again, uh, great plays by Jack. Um, he played phenomenally well. Um, like the the specs um, crit dark pulse crit on the um, assault vest right you also did suck um, a bit but um, it's Pokemon what can you do um, um, that's pretty much gonna be it there's really much, I can't really there's not really much else to say about this battle uh, I did enjoy it um, regardless of how the um, hacks did help me or or um, hurt Jack in the sense, but nonetheless, hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Check out, um, check out Jack's side of the battle. You already know who he is and all that stuff. As for all the other coaches in the PPL, I'm going to get the heck out of here. Until the next week, until the next battle when we take on um, a GBA coach in Tom in the San Jose Sharpedos. That's going to be it for me. And until the next time, guys, this is Tone signing off for now. Peace out.